Hi and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm Simon and today I'm here with my baby sister, Miriam. I can't really say that about you anymore. I am 25. Yeah. <laughs> with my little sister Miriam and we're going to be talking about five of Miriam's favourite classical myth retellings. Some of you may well know our mother mm. and she is a classicist but she's not the only classicist in the family. No. No. I chose to follow in those footsteps very closely. <laughs> she did. And what I thought would be nice to do this because the other day I got a book that has featured in both of our childhoods yeah, quite a lot. heavily. And it's this. It is The Story of Persephone by Penelope Farmer and Graham McCullum. And I used to read, well, we read this to a lot by yeah. mum, but also would sit and spend hours looking at the pictures. I love those images. They They're are still, still kind of float around Well, my some brain. of them are so gothic, and then some of yeah. them are like, where's the one that I love that's got the, um... Talk about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> where's that it. one? Yeah, like that's just, And I was so tough because I found this on oh, my eBay, yeah, for £3. Three, £3 pounds for all of this and sentimental it's in pristine joy. edition. How do you turn pages with those nails? Do you want to show your nails? <laughs> I mean, how? I don't know how. I do love this image of the I horses. I think this is why I don't like horses. Maybe, it's quite terrifying. I mean, Miriam, we're not reading the whole book together. I'm, I'm, I'm off. <laughs> oh, this oh, one. Is that your favourite? Yeah. That's quite gothy. That makes a lot of sense. It does make sense. Now, we were both brought up on this book by our mother, Louise. And um, I did do classics when I went to school, but I gave up after the first year because I got 99%. And because there were only two classics teacher, one was my mum and one was another mm. teacher, Mr. Clegg. I was taught by him, not mum. Uh, people thought that I cheated. Well, yeah. I and the other thing that I got 99% in is sex education. So there we well, go. Well, you know, There's two a parts fascinating <laughs> facts. Classics and sex. Anyway, but you went and studied it. I did, yeah. I did an under undergraduate degree in classics which um which i loved i did really really enjoy it and just the, the amount of text that i read that i wouldn't have thought of reading was just love it so we're going to talk about classical mystery times because both of us like them yeah it took me a really long time to get back into them because i think i was quite put off for quite a while yeah and it's actually thanks to an author that we'll talk about later that i got back into them but we'll talk about that in a bit yeah we're going to be talking about a lot of different things lots of conversations Miriam, first up which book have you picked the silence of the girls by pat barker this is a brilliant, um, beautiful uh, American edition. I was going to say, I didn't recognise it when you pulled it off the shelf. Yeah, it's, it, yeah I got it's it really in pretty. The Strand, I think, in New York. New York. Why did you pick this one? So, I kind of hadn't really read any classical retelling since being a child. Um, and then I think it was when we went on holiday to Sicily that you lent me this. Not this or edition. Gave, not this, this edition. This is still pristine. No. Or, or gave me. I hope it was you gave me because it's still in my house. So, <laughs> so. I gave you that because I have this. <laughs> okay, well that's okay then. So I read this and it just, I think because studying classics is a degree and just hearing a lot of male voices, I think the fact that there were so many women that I'd wondered about and kind of didn't see enough of and saw in this, it just made... It made me so happy. So I'm going to say something controversial here, because this is not one of my favourite mythery channels. I think it's very good. I haven't read the follow-up. She's done another one. Has she? And I haven't read that. But for me, this didn't... It didn't counteract the silence of the girls from classics. I felt like it was still very male-led. The women yeah. were more to the fore than in a lot of the myths. Yeah. But I just there was got still a male voice. Yeah, there were a lot of them, and yeah. I think it bothered me a little bit that it right. was still like I thought. Just from her writing it from a female's perspective, it, as a writer, that shifts it a yeah. little bit. But still, I was just a bit like, "Come on!" I felt like there needed to be some really like. See, I that. I kind of disagree because. Well, you're welcome to. Yeah, I, I do get out a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, I disagree because. What what I liked about it is the women in this aren't actually very vocal to other characters, but you hear a lot about their inner workings. Very true. And I thought it was kind of actually representative of the mythology and the text that we know from classics. Like it does, 
it it did you know harbour back to the Iliad and and things like that in the way that the things that they do say are very minimal. That's very interesting. Okay, mm. I take that on board. Yeah. But also, still didn't <laughs> love it. No, I just think I just remember feeling a bit like I wanted more. Yeah. And actually, there's another book that we'll be talking about that I think delivers what I wanted this one to, but it didn't quite. That said, though, yeah. I now really want to come read our next one. I didn't even realise there was another one. This is exciting. Well, there is, and thank goodness we're going to a bookshop later. <laughs> So next up we have, oh, uh, here we go, The Ooh, Witch of All Witches. Cersei! Oh, I, I, oh, Madeline Miller. There we go. I had to check, but Madeline Miller. <laughs> I absolutely love this book for the description. I think it just, it's it's as I imagine, like kind of ancient Greek mythology. It's, it's how I see it in my head and it's just been written down. Oh, wow. I love it. Was there a book that we were read to as kids, obviously in different decades, by a mum that had the whirlpool and the... Yes, because, that I, th I think and it I was... And I can't remember what it was, but this, I kept thinking of this. It was like a, a monster's book, yeah. like a mythological monster's picture book. She's got book. them somewhere, so we might have to have a rifle through shells oh, on my neck there. I'd love to but see that. But this again. really evokes that to me. Um, now, interestingly, you said that, do you think if this hadn't been, so i going back to this one, if this hadn't been the first myth retelling that you got into, you'd like it as much as you do? I don't know. Because what I wanted to say that I forgot was, because I've read quite a few by this point, yeah. this one just didn't wow me. Like I, I think probably in the context of the others now, it doesn't live up. Yeah. Like, I don't get as excited talking about it as I do the ones well, that we're going to talk like about. Well, clearly like this one, yeah. for a start. Nearly weaned myself. <laughs> So did you read this before the song of Achilles? Or yes, I did actually. Okay. I read it beforehand. Um, I because I did a classics degree all throughout uni. People were telling me to read the song of Achilles, and you know when people tell you to read something so much that you're just like, I'm not going to. That's a very <laughs> very us trait. It is, yeah. Like if you tell me from... to do it, it won't happen. So don't. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if we get that from the artist formerly known as our mother, who's now Louise Savage Muses, but possibly. I don't... I think it comes from the savage side it is, of the family. It is a savage trait, but I don't know if she's as, as petty as us in that regard. <laughs> oh, did you love it so much? Because it, you were saying it brought all the imagery to you. I think it's yeah. a fascinating character study See, as well. See, this is it as well. Like, the, the idea of, of kind of um, sorcery and being a witch in ancient Greece, I don't know enough about it. So that's that's one area I wish I'd gone into more of. So question, though. Yeah. And it's good that you can answer this for me because I can't because I didn't study it. How much do we know of Cersei's voice or character through the myths in general? So she, she appears in the Odyssey, but very, again, ridiculously briefly. And I don't know of, like, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I probably am. It was only an undergrad. The but I don't, will correct you. Yeah, I don't can't wait. Worry. Please. <laughs> I don't think her voice appears in many other classical texts, to be honest. She's, she's, she's features in very very briefly in the odyssey but that's that's about it i mean there, there, there's other mythologies known about her like the fact that you know who who her parents are and blah, 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 blah. but in texts that i've read personally so how thrilling is it for you as someone who studied her to then hear this voice and how bang on do you think madeline miller got it i think because she's nice... a classicist madeline yeah miller, she so. is yeah and i think the nice thing about um giving voice to female characters in the classical world the nice thing about that is they don't really have a voice no. so the accuracy isn't really a problem because we don't know who she was as a person we only know her name and what she's you know what what happened to her and it's basically it feels like it's turning bullet points into a kind of please don't say a full word document no, I'm not going to say that. Didn't know where that was going to go. Though. No, it's it's just like the bullet, the, the clear kind of headlines. Either, Miriam, but, please no. don't. In Comic Sans, what are you thinking? <laughs> yeah. So you liked it. I love. I it. have a question. Yeah. What did you think about the Song of Achilles? Because that was my first read back into classical myth. And yeah. I read it because Natalie Haynes had raved about it and then it won the Woman's Prize for Fiction. Yeah. And so that's why I got into it. And I remember being really, I can remember exactly where I was sat. I was um, in a house share and I remember opening it thinking, oh, come on then, impress me. <laughs> and then about five hours went and I was yeah. so into it. Yeah. I mean, I, I felt like that with this one. And I think it's, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't want to turn this into a gendered thing, but I don't know whether being a woman you know, reading it 
What? Wow, that's put me in my place. No, but just genuinely, like a woman who studied women who don't have well, voices. Well, I just like the film Killers because it's about the gays. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Well, this is a question because the song of Achilles is a contentious subject between me and our mother. Is it? Because she didn't like it. What? I know. Louise. What was quite awkward was I used to do a podcast called The Readers and we used to have a book club where me and Gab would read the book, talk about what we loved about it, then have the author on to talk about it. Right. And then have a guest and we did the song of Achilles. So we had Madeline Miller talk about it and it was me and Gavin loved it. And then we had mum on because I thought classist and she's like, I didn't like it. <gasps> So, Madeline, I'm so sorry. Mum did love this, though, just to say. But the I... song of Achilles, I think Mum has a... Um, it's not her Achilles. Yeah, she's got a very set idea of Achilles in her head. I think she quite... She's got the hots for Achilles, I think. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, because he is a whiny little... Yeah, I was going to say a B-word. Hench. But... Personality wise, no, really. whiny, Sometimes whiny little, matter, though, stroppy little Sometimes boy. Sometimes personality is very secondary if they're hot. <laughs> anyway, that's talking to me, sorry, not to our mother. Let's move swiftly on you before we ruin somewhere. her reputation. <laughs> no, but I did, I did love the song of Achilles. I did love it. And I, I really, really enjoyed the fact that kind of like ambiguous, like relationship between the two of them was between Patroclus and Achilles was... Uh, and are you on the side of classicists who believe they were in some kind of relationship? Oh, a hundred percent. Because I don't think Mum thinks they were. A hundred percent. They were definitely together. Well, together. I'm, not, I'm not wanting to give Mum any uh, potential content ideas, but that debate would be fascinating. It would be fascinating. Between you and her, not me. I'm not getting involved. Mm. <laughs> You've got the nails that would win. Um, but yeah, I just I think this is a great book and also just so... Pretty. And excitingly, um, I believe Madeline's next book is about my favourite myth, which is the aforementioned Persephone and Demeter. <gasps> so I think that's going to be really See, interesting. See, I love, I love Persephone. So next up, I'm not holding it, but you hold this one. This is, a, this, I love this Hi, book. Hi, Natalie. This is A Thousand Chips by Natalie Haynes, or as I once called it, A Thousand Splendid Chips on a live thousand TV. A <laughs> Splendid because... Chips. Yes, I just gave it an extra word. Yeah. Why do you love this? And then I'll tell you why I love this. I think, I, 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 have, a, I have a feeling I know what you're going to say, and it's probably similar to what I'm going to say. Go on then, Oracle. Thank Predict you. me what I'm going to say. Um, I think you're going to say this is what Silence of the Girls didn't do. It's what it's the book I think Silence of the Girls should have been. Yes, yeah. yeah. I and I I do agree. Well, no, with that. it shouldn't have been because I don't think I think Natalie Haynes has such a sense of humour in her writing, and and she she makes some of the dark parts really funny. Yeah. But also she's like, is it um, Cassandra? This is she makes really snotty and really like yeah, and just. I just think she plays so brilliantly with the characters, but also it's the enthusiasm. And also I think, sorry, I've taken over. It's all right. But I think this is the perfect in to classical myth retellings, potentially. Yeah, if, if you haven't already got gamut. a vested yeah. interest. Apart yeah. from maybe the Song of Achilles. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, why do you love this book? Sorry. I love it because all of those women that I had a fascination with, again, Cassandra, and, you know, all of these women that kind of peppered throughout the, the Iliad. Please watch those nails near my face. <laughs> no, but all of those women that are like peppered throughout the Iliad that I remember reading for the first time when I was doing A-levels and being like, but that's so cool, like being able to predict the future, but what, you know, uh, what, what must that have been like with nobody listening to you? And, and what actually, was the perils of it Exactly, well. and actually having somebody giving a voice to that in an authentic and... Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I just, it, it was so refreshing to read i loved it and it actually got me out of a bit of a hiatus of reading for a while um because i remember i read it during the pandemic i think okay and it was it was after a time of me being a bit put off from reading because i've just finished my undergrad and it just got me straight back in again and it, it yeah I, I i think that's one of the reasons as well that uh, i love it so much because it brought back that enthusiasm and that love of reading yeah. Have you read Stone Blind yet? No, it's on my to read list. Would recommend. It's on my. Um... Would also recommend. Have you read Pandora's oh. Jar? Yes, I have. Pandora's yeah. Jar's amazing. Yeah, love that. Divine one. Might is also brilliant. And we went and saw um, The Return of the Gods at Liverpool's World Museum yesterday. Yeah. And Natalie was talking afterwards, and we both really wish we'd been able to see it because we had there's some a thoughts. certain. Divine Might brings up the issues around Zeus mm. and Hera and the 
hear a blame yes that she gets as a, a a jealous wife rather than a hard done by wife yeah and that narrative is so kind of popular yeah and just generally has been the classicist view yeah but now it's like hang on a minute if your husband was doing all this thing all these awful things to women and you don't and have any a power to stop it, him. Yeah, like yeah. you you know yeah it gives it that side and i really wish we'd able to say what do you think about the narrative downstairs compared to yes anyway but that makes it sound like i didn't like the exhibition no, i really it. really 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 did it's a really really good exp exhibition it's on until february but i am glad i had the 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 kind of additional knowledge that i did have otherwise yeah. i would have i should say also these are all fiction books we didn't yes. go through non-fiction books but i thought i'd maybe just next mention time. maybe next time i've i've only read one mary beard Oh really? Yeah, I'd like to read more Mary Beard because I think See, she's a, a bit of, of an icon. Kind of dirty textbooks. Oh yeah, I'm talking about dirty <laughs> textbooks. I'm talking about fun nonfiction. Um, but I'm very excited because I'm seeing Mary Beard on December the fifteenth as know, part I'm of this very exhibition that's on. So that's that's very very exciting. Yeah. Anyway, so that's that one. Lovely. Lovely. Now I've read all three of these, but the next two I haven't read. Is it these two? Yeah. And the first one is one that I bought you. Yes. I also bought myself it and a copy of it for my mother. Yes. I... Our mother. He does this all the time. My mother. Listen, I had 16 years of her just being mine, okay? Selfish. And then it all changed. Selfish. Next book, Miriam. Wake Siren. Bye. Nina McLaughlin? McLaughlin. McLaughlin. Thank you so much. That Ovid. Was a Resung. Yeah. Or Ovid? 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 Ovid, I see. Ovid. Ovid, okay. But, you know, who knows? I'm not bothered. So, the reason I love this book is because Ovid's Metamorphoses, that's my favourite epic poem. Oh, really? Are you familiar? Yeah. No. Although, so, I might be familiar with something to be surprised at. Aristotle's Poetics. Yeah. I've read that. But you haven't read? No. I would really recommend it. Okay. I really want to read the Emily Watson editions of both the Iliad and yes, the Odyssey. Yes, I've read those. Big fan. Okay. Big fan. Anyways, which is the one that's got the chapter about boats that both you and Mum said oh, the don't Iliad. bother with? Chapter, chapter, well, book two. Yeah, so you saw that. You can just whiz on. There's, there's a little life. bit at the end that's, that's kind of relevant, but okay. just skip through because it's just a list of family names and boats. Okay. Don't bother. Do you need to know those family names or boats at any other point? No, it oh, was okay. it was like a kind of like name dropping thing for when it was still a it was still a, a vocal poem that was shared between people and they'd be like, oh, that's my family. I'm involved in this story. So it was a way to get kind of the ancient reader engaged. But to us now, it's just a dirge. So don't bother. Anyway. Anyway. But this is not a dirge. And why do you love Ovid's Metamorphosis so much? Because it what what I love most about classics is is the is the kind of in-depth mythology and the different stories and the different kind of interpretations of stories and stuff like that and Ovid was a Roman that came in in the Augustan age and and just decided to map out mythology as he knew it from the beginning of time until um Augustus or Octavian became emperor so he decided all right I'll map out all of the mythology but along the theme of uh, kind of transformation. So stories like Daphne and Apollo, where she turns into a, a laurel tree and- um, A lot of transformations in mythology. Exactly. And it, it kind of, you, you can do a really lovely kind of one from the other um, right up until- Can you though with some of Zeus's? Well, it yeah, transforms he transforms into some, animals. Yeah, but for some very dodgy reasons. But this is the thing that's good about Ovid's Metamorphosis. It doesn't, it doesn't um, censor that. I, I loved that epic because it, like, the description in it is beautiful, and the, the kind of, the way that he describes these transformations is incredible. So when I saw this and I saw it was a retelling of Ovid, I was like, uh oh, it's not going to live up to it because I love it to the extent that I do. But what I absolutely loved about this is the fact that it took those characters that I've imagined over and over again as I've reread it and, and who, again, don't have a voice. This is, you know, a theme throughout this mm. literature, isn't it? But and then they they were just given such an angry, um, passionate voice, which I just absolutely loved. And is this poems or is it actually it's, short stories oh, it's sorry it's influenced by verse um it's interesting babe just light everywhere light 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 so it's it's influenced by like meter and verse but it's not all written in in verse um no 
which but it's it's beautiful that there, there is a rhythm to to certain sections though which i i find really satisfying i want to read this now now would although recommend. do you think i need to have read metamorphosis first i would if i were you okay so this isn't one that you can just go into if you... well i think i think you can but it won't have the same impact because you won't know what's being referenced yeah that sounds exciting right last but not least and this author is becoming a bit of a queen of classical myth retellings i think yes i'd agree um this is the most recent one that i've read ariadne by jennifer saints and i actually i've managed to get this in our curriculum at school because i love it so much oh well done um so we read an extract of this and talk about jennifer if you're watching she's doing it for you we're doing it gal i absolutely love this uh when i've read not read it. this one yet by the way please read it please. well i've got this i've got electra mm -hmm. and i've got atalanta yeah, I I haven't read Electra or Atalanta yet. I always read ridiculous. Atalanta as Atlanta, Atlanta. and then think of, think of the Real Housewives of Atlanta. One of my favourite of the Real Housewives <laughs> franchise. So, why do you love this one so much? And I was going to say, what's it about? What's it about? Who knows? What I love about this is that there's a really obvious conclusion to this book because, if, if you know the mythology, but I don't want to spoil it for you, so I'm not going to say, but I completely forgot about it because the story of Ariadne was so powerful I completely forgot that you know that the kind of don't you don't you I, I know don't I keep you. I keep trying not to no, spoil don't it, you but, don't but you dare I I did I did forget that there's don't. there's a really clear um mythological link in this that I'd completely forgotten about because okay. you're so invested in Ariadne's character and her journey and how she's basically every man she's around completely I'm trying not to swear messes her over okay yeah so I loved as well um the description of Dionysus in this book because it was so it, it felt it felt exactly as i'd imagine him again and when when that happens i feel like when when you imagine a god that is subjective and not everybody's going to read this thinking oh that's my that's my dionysus you know but i it was how i'd imagine him as kind of like a mischievous um manipulative young man wine you know. drinking yeah theatrical theatrical yeah definitely and the thing is you you are lulled into the first sense of full sense of security when he's first introduced and you're like oh no he's... don't you give any spoilers i felt that there might be one coming there um on that note would you say this is a good in yes yeah what I've... out of the these five would you say is the best in to classical myth retellings if you've not read one yet i'd say probably this one. Ooh. Just because the others, especially uh, Wake Siren, they're so based on specific texts that they are retelling, but this one isn't. Oh, it's not based off a specific story. Even though it's been... Ariadne's story. Yeah. Okay. It's, this is like a mix of different mythology picked from different places, and which, which is why I was so surprised at the end. Because obviously mythology all links throughout ancient mm. Greece, but oh yeah, we're not going there. Um, so okay, that's very helpful. I was going to say um, I was going to bring, and I've forgotten because I left it downstairs, a book that I'd recommend to you that mm. is a myth retelling. I'm going to put that one down so that if, if I can, I'm going to put a picture of it somewhere here, and that is Clytemnestra by Constanza Casati, which is incredible because I. I didn't realise, well, I knew the story of Clytemnestra, which I won't spoil for anyone who yeah. does them, but it's pretty dramatic. I didn't quite realise she's at the heart of so many myths, or even oh, yeah. like a peripheral, she will just sort of shift through Shift a in, and yeah. I really want to read that. Yeah, because she's, very, 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 she, very, very, it's, very it's her and Medea. Those those are the two women in, in Greek mythology who I... I'm so interested in. I'm fascinated well, by Well, do you know who Natalie Haynes' next book's about? Is it Medea? It is Medea. I think that's going to be really good. Now, I had two questions for you. One, is there a Greek myth or god or goddess that you've not seen written about that you would like to see? I mean Medea. Apart from Medea, because we've Apart had that answer. Medea. I'm going to do the countdown clock. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see more from Artemis. Okay. 
interesting. And then my final question, because it's going to be me. Epicleros? Epicleros? How do I my hair? Do you think, because this is something we all talked about a bit, are we possibly at peak classical myth retelling? Can there be too many? I. What's nice about classical mythology is there's there's so many avenues to go down that you could explore, that you could go into that I don't think we are. Okay. Because there's there's so much more again that I want to see. I feel like there's and there's earlier mythology as well that could be looked into. So like Mesopotamian mythology or the Amazons. I want to hear yeah, a lot more about the Amazons. I that's that's one massive like lapse when when it comes to the literature that we have in in H, from ancient Greek because the, the, there was a whole epic written about you know a a black guy and an Amazon woman who who went off and fought and you know and I'm like well that that would be brilliant to to read about just to explore some of the attitudes and the kind of representations mm. at the time of different kinds of people because when you read classical mythology it is very oh and another old strong muscly man white man white man went out and thought yeah. you know and it's just it gets it does it can get monotonous so that that would be refreshing i think if that was explored a little bit more as well i feel a bit like we need a bit less of odysseus hercules yes yeah and we're done with maybe. them we need to just go move on find some of the gods and goddesses who are less mentioned and some of the i agree yeah 100 percent. that's i think that's why cersei was so good as well because I know, I know, obviously Odysseus is in that, but it was it was focused on a lesser known. He's a bit more of a. It's character. a bit like actually Hamnet. Hamnet, yeah. Because William Shakespeare is like in it, not but really important. I love it, it because the better, roles have not, been yeah. reversed. It's like one of them has a voice and the other one doesn't, and good. Wow, that was delightful, Miriam. Thank you so much for joining me. I loved that. That sounded really disingenuous. It did, didn't it? You know what? <laughs> I'm used to it. The sarcasm. The endless, endless the joys of sibling sarcasm. relationships and rivalry. Rivalry. Um, <laughs> I don't know the Thank you so much. That was fascinating and lovely. No, I loved it. And um, yeah, I'll see you in another video. Very, I can't remember what's in the end of the video now. That was just we've, we've we've we're done. Yeah, we're done. Um, but no, thanks everyone for watching. And if you want to carry on the conversation, down. But what were you going to say? I was going to say if you want to see me in more videos. What do they have to do? Uh, comment. But also do keep the conversation going in the comments down below with any recommendations you might have yes. of classical myth retellings, or also, and we didn't talk about any of these really, but any books that are based around classical myths but set in the present day because that's Ooh, something we didn't talk about yeah actually. it is yeah and maybe we could have you back on to talk about those at <gasps> some point so that's it from me and from mim but until next time bye bye